my channel. This video is an incredibly important one. It is how to manage your cash flow and budgeting. If you can master the art of managing your cash flow and budgeting, life is going to be so much easier. You'll be so much more successful in achieving your personal lifestyle and financial goals. And it's a lot easier than you think. Now, before I launch into this video, I want to make sure that not only have you subscribed to my channel already, but more importantly, you've switched on that notification button. So you know the moment I've uploaded a new video around getting out of debt, um, cash flow and budgeting, investing, building long-term passive income streams, and financial freedom. Also, if you really enjoy this video and want to watch more about it and learn more about it, I recommend watching this video over here that I previously filmed at the end of this video. All right, let's talk about cash flow and budgeting. Now, first of all, no one is really taught how to manage our cash flow and budgeting. It's not taught at home, and more often than not, it's not taught in school or university. But when you know how to do this, you'll actually really enjoy your banking ritual and you'll feel so comfortable and so secure financially knowing that you're on top and in control of your cash flow and budgeting. Now, first of all, I want you to have all your bank accounts with the one bank. No more savings accounts floating around in cyberspace because if you can't see it, you'll forget about it. And I know so many people who've opened up those savings accounts and put $20, $40 after a certain period of time, they've completely forgotten about it and don't even know how to log in and get that money. I want you to be able to log on to your internet banking, whether it be through your app or your desktop and see your entire cash flow situation right then and there. This is about making it easy and efficient so that you actually do it. The first account that I want you to have is an everyday savings account with a linked ATM debit card. This account is where you allocate money every time you get paid to pay for your daily, weekly, monthly, fortnightly expenses. This is where you set up all your direct debits to come from. So the gym memberships, the mobile phones, this is also where you'll spend to get your coffees and lunches and your weekend spending money. You never use credit cards. You always just use your everyday savings account. The next account is your lifestyle and emergency account. Now, before I explain this account, I want to explain to us why most of us get in trouble with money, cash flow, and also end up in debt. More often than not, our budgets are not the same month to month. We might have a really quiet month where we don't have as many living expenses and we might have some money left over. And it creates a false sense of security because we see that money that's left over and we think, oh wow, I've got a bit more money in my month, the account that I normally would have. I'm gonna go and buy, some, buy myself something new. And we go and spend that money. However, the next month or the following month, we get hit with a bill that we completely forgot about was coming up. And we don't have enough money in our account because we spent it the month before. So we reach for a credit card and get ourselves back into debt or even worse, we get ourselves deeper into debt. Now, this is why I recommend you have a life and emergency savings account. This is like your float count. This is what you, where you stockpile your finances and your cash flow in preparation to all those ad hoc or irregular bills. So for example, our quarterly bills, like electricity bills, or our biannual bills, or our annual bills. This is where we will always see at least a couple of thousand dollars in this account so that when bills come our way, we are not rattled financially and we can get back on with living our lives and building up these accounts again. Now within this life and emergency account is your SOS money. So this is the money that keeps you out of trouble. If anything should happen out of the blue, an emergency, you're, again, your financial cage is not rattled. Now the question that's probably burning on your lips is, well, Kana, how much money should I have as an emergency savings amount? Well, there is no one size fits all. Everyone is different. It depends on your what stresses you out financially and what your financial responsibilities are. Now, for someone who's young, say living at home, got a really good cash flow, they may only want and need, say, $5,000 in emergency money. It's enough to get them through for a couple of months of living expenses and not having to borrow money from people. However, say a young family on one income with say three young children may need a lot more than that. It may be closer to say $15,000. However, you need to ask yourself what number or what amount of money in my savings account would help me sleep well at night. Now, once you know what that number is, I want you to nickname this account with that number in there. So in this example, we would have our life and $5,000 emergency savings account as the nickname. So we can see that every time we log on to our internet banking. Now there is a reason or a method to my madness. 
it is to stop creating a false sense of security. If we had, say, $6,000 in our life account and one day we decided, oh, I'm going to go and upgrade my laptop, um, I'm going to go and spend, you know, five or say $1,500 upgrading my laptop, we go and spend that money. But actually, we don't really have that money to blow because of that $6,500 account balance, $5,000 is allocated for emergency money. So we cannot be blowing this money unnecessarily. It is for an emergency use only. However, I want to make sure you're aware, budgeting and cash flow is not about being mean or depriving yourself financially or being the fun police. It's about balance and it's about giving ourselves spending boundaries. That's simply all it is. And with boundaries, it makes us accountable. So for the example of when you want to upgrade, say a laptop or buy a new dress or a new handbag, that is perfectly fine. We just allocate that to a separate account. Now this would be our lifestyle account and I want you to nickname that account in a line to your goal. For example, new handbag account or new laptop account or in my case it's my holiday savings account. Now the fourth and final account is actually your financial goal account. This is where I want you to put money in on a regular basis towards a long term financial goal that's important to you. So whether that be saving up for the deposit on your first home or whether it be saving up for an investment portfolio, or even if you're not quite sure what that goal might be, I want you to still open up this account so that you create intention, purpose, and direction for your cash flow. Now for me personally, this is my savings to invest account. I put money into this account on a regular basis and let it sit there until I know where I want to invest that money and for what financial goal. It is really easy to set these accounts up and these three should be internet based account with the same account. This means as these accounts build up, you're actually earning some interest on these savings accounts. Now the next step is to work out our banking ritual so we know exactly how much money to allocate to each of these four accounts so that we're always on top of our cash flow and we feel great about our finances. Now I actually have two tools available for you. If you subscribe to the Sugar Mama website, you will get a complimentary budget template to work from which will help you work out your total cost of living and how much money you need to allocate to these accounts. The second tool that's available for you is this Sugar Budget app which you can download from the iTunes store. This is a much more advanced version, it's quite visual and explains to you exactly the banking instructions to allocate this money. Now if you'd like to learn more about this, I recommend you watch this video here which is a tutorial as to how to use the Sugar Budget. It's something that I use on a daily basis and is really helpful. And the links to subscribe to the Sugar Mama website are right here and the link to download the Sugar Budget app is also right here, but also in the video description box below. All right, so how do we allocate our money? Say for example, I get paid $2,000 after tax per month by my employer. And my employer pays my pay into my everyday account. From using the Sugar Budget app or using the complimentary budget template, I know that my living expenses for the month are around about $1,200 per month. If I've got that much money in my account, I should be able to survive financially. I then look at all my upcoming bills that are coming in. I might even check my diary to see what's due. And I now know that going forward, I need to start allocating approximately $500 per month into this account. Not only to pay for these upcoming bills, but also to slowly start building up my $5,000 emergency account. I then look at my lifestyle goal, which is for example, to buy say a new handbag and it's gonna cost me $2,000 and I'd like to buy it in say 10 months time. I know that if I want to achieve that goal in time, I need to start putting $200 a month away into this savings account. I also want to start doing the thousand dollar project and buying some shares. So I don't know what shares I want to buy yet, but I'm going to start saving anyway in the preparation to that. So I'm going to start putting say a hundred dollars per month into my savings to invest account. This is the banking ritual I will follow every time I get paid. It is allocating the right amount of money for what is important to me. However, if I decide I really want to focus on building up this emergency money sooner, or I know that I've got some big bills coming in my way sooner rather than later, and I know that the $500 per month is going to cut me short, I can do something else. I'm giving you a quick get out of jail card for free. You can temporarily forego or simply cut down on these two accounts for the time being to quickly stockpile this as a priority. So for example, you might want to hold off on doing this and maybe either reduce it to zero or $50 here and say $100 here. 
which then allows me to put a little bit more into my life and emergency account like this. So you actually have my permission to occasionally tweak your banking ritual as long as you're putting money into each of these savings accounts and achieving your financial goals. So the moment you have more than $5,000 in emergency money and a healthy float in your life account for these quarterly, biannual and annual bills, you can start beefing up these accounts if that's what's important to you. But the point is you stick to this banking ritual month after month after month. So you don't even think about it, you just simply do it. Now this is something that I personally do every month. It gives me so much security and comfort knowing that I'm on top of my cash flow and I never need to rely on a credit card to get me out of trouble. Now that is it for this video. If you have any other tips or tricks that you think other people would benefit from in knowing how you manage your budget and your cash flow, please put a comment in the comments box below. I always absolutely love hearing from you. And as I said before, if you want to learn more about managing your cash flow, getting more ideas and inspiration and education, make sure you click on this card here to watch the next video. And as I said, make sure you subscribe, but also you've switched on that notification button. And I will see you in the later in the week for Lifestyle Love.